Good morning, Rutherford County. You are listening to the Word of Faith Fellowship radio program. My name is Mary, and I'm here with my dear friend Allison. And we wanted to come to you this morning and share with you our testimony and what God has done in our lives, how he joined us together when we were very young, 12 years old. We've been friends for almost 37 37. years. And he joined us together, and he plucked us out of the world and out of the path of destruction for our lives and put us right in his will. And I want to share with you a scripture to start off. If you have your Bibles, turn to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. It says, Even as in his love he chose us, actually picked us out for himself as his own, in Christ before the foundation of the world. And I want to stop right there. God has chosen each one of us to serve him before the foundation of the world. He knew you. He knew me. He knew my friend Allison. He handpicked us. He has chosen us to be his minister. That we should be holy, consecrated, and set apart for him. He wants us to be blameless and set apart. We have not been called to walk in the world. We've been called to walk as ministers with Jesus. And blameless in his sight, even above reproach, before him in love. Verse 5 says, For he foreordained us, destined, planned in love for us to be adopted as his own children. He has destined us and planned us to be his children. And growing up, I did not know that. I did not know that there was a call of God on my life. Allison did not know that she had a call of God on her life. And I want to start by sharing my testimony because I grew up in a small town. I was born in Buffalo, New York. I lived in that area until I was about 18. I had a stable household. I had a mother and a father who loved me very dearly. I have a younger brother. I had a, I had a very, very good childhood. Um, every Sunday we went to church. We went to a Methodist church. That's where I grew up. And I really liked going to that church. I remember learning a lot about God. And there was a youth program there. I did a youth program there. And the only, the only thing was, was I didn't know that I could have a personal relationship with Jesus. I did not know that. And you've got to realize that. Even as a child, you can know Jesus. You can have a personal relationship with God. And so growing up, I went to this church. And I was in a public school. Alice and I were in a public school. And I remember growing up, and I had a really hard time in public school. It was, it was very difficult for me. I was picked on constantly. One thing that I can think of is when I was in the fifth grade, I wore a pair of pants to school that had a horse on the back pocket. And I was mocked and scoffed and laughed at for these pants that I had on. I was really picked on for these pants. Well... They ended up being Jordache jeans, if any of you know what that those were. And before the end of the year, every young person and every girl in that school wanted a pair of those jeans. But I was made fun of. It was, it was very hard for me. And, and I know Alice and I talk very often about the fact that we are so grateful that we did not grow up with a cell phone in our hand. Yes. We didn't know any. There was no social media back then in the right. 70s and 80s. Um, I didn't have Facebook, we didn't have Twitter, we didn't have Snapchat. So grateful that that's not a part, that that was not a part of our life. Because there was already that social pressure in public school to be somebody. And the older that I got, it got worse in my life. Like I said, I was picked on. I was constantly feeling rejected. Um, And you know, the competition with your friends, you want to be the prettiest, you want to be the best, you want to be the smartest. There was a lot of that going on. And so I remember in the seventh grade, Allison and her family moved to my town and we became instant, instant friends. And one reason for that was I was the tallest girl in the class up until she came. We were the tallest girls in the class and we just hit it off immediately. We, we really became good friends. And so throughout high school, I had other friends she had other friends. We were busy doing, you know, different things. We did play some sports together. Um, but my life started to 
really changed the older that I got. I started having relationships that were not good. Um, I started listening to a lot of music, a lot of different music, a lot of bad music. Um, some of the songs that I listened to, the lyrics were, were very bad. And um, music became my idol. It was my way of dealing with my rejection that I had and the competition that I had with, with certain girls. And um, I ended up, as a senior, I ended up in a relationship with a guy that I thought I was going to marry. And he was a year older than me, so he went away to college, came home over Christmas break, and he broke up with me. And I was devastated. I was so heartbroken. And one of the things that I did, of course, I did not have a relationship with God. I did I did not I did not know that I could cry out to Jesus. Yes, I was in church, but I did not I did not know I could cry out to Jesus. And so I was devastated. And what I decided to do was push all those feelings down and deal with it myself. And I decided I was I was not going to be hurt by anybody else. I I was not. I was going to nobody was going to tell me what to do. I was going to do whatever I wanted to do and I was not going to be hurt again. And I do want to say that when I was about 12 or 13, my mother had an experience with God and we started going to a different church. We started going to a non-denominational church and I didn't know until I got there that Allison went to that church and that her family was in leadership there. And my mom's life started to change and she started to take my brother and myself to church. We would go to Sunday school and I liked it, but I was not ready to give my heart to Jesus. I was not to that point of really wanting to serve God. Yes, that church was different from the Methodist church. They did teach different things, but I... I was not ready to totally surrender. And at this point, when I became a senior and I was hurt by this guy that I, I was in a relationship with, my life totally went downhill. I became a different person. I started to become very rebellious. I started to want to do things that a young lady should not be doing. And I was, it was because I was devastated. I was hurt, but I wasn't going to allow myself to be hurt again. And so one of the major things that happened when we were seniors was I started, of course, I was close to Allison, but when we were seniors, we started working together and we became even, even closer yes. then. And of course, her family, her dad and I became close as well. And one of the things that happened was on spring break, Allison's family was going to go to Florida to go to the beach. And I think it was like a two-week Two week trip. Yes. I think it was a two week trip. And so, but I was not invited to go. It was just going to be her family. Well, I think I somehow mentioned that I really wanted to go because I wanted to go to the beach. I'd never been to a Florida beach. I was, I thought it would be great. And so Allison somehow managed to invite me to, to come and her family was okay with it. And so, but on the way down there, we were going to stop and visit her uncle, who was a youth pastor at a church in a small town of Leland, North Carolina. And she told me we were going to stop there to visit him, and then we were going to continue on to Florida. Well, that didn't bother me. I thought, well, that's that's fine. I can, you know, I can meet her family or whatever. We can go to church. That's, that's fine. I was all about going to the beach, okay? So what ended up happening was we went on the trip, we get down there, I meet her family, and we went to church. Oh, I need to back up. I forgot to tell this part. This is a very important part. Her father told me before we left to go on the trip that if I went with them, that my life was going to change. It would never be the same. Now, as a young person, very tormented at this point, I was so hopeless it felt like in my heart that I had no way to change. I was hurt and devastated. I used my music as an idol to drown out all my hurt and my pain. I was devastated. I was hopeless. There was no hope for me. But when he said those words to me, they went in my heart. I And I didn't even realize the magnitude of what he was saying to me. But 
he said, you, your life will change. You will never be the same. So my interest was piqued, but I didn't, I wasn't sure what he meant, but it went in my heart. His words went in my heart and really it was God speaking through him to me. He and was getting your heart ready. He was, he was preparing my heart because what happened to me was it was a total life change. It was a heart change really for both of us. Right. So do you want to say yes, something? Let me, let me interject some things here so we can kind of bring the story together because really it is such a miracle what God has done when I think back about two 17-year-old girls that went from living in the world to to surrendering to God and beginning to walk with Him to even where we are today. I mean, still learning, still learning to walk with God, but it's a miracle that He pulled us out. We both had plans of our own. We had paths that we were we were very rapidly going down that God totally turned around. And I mean, I, I'm forever grateful for all that he's done for me. Um, just a quick, you know, background about myself. I was born um, in West Virginia. I had a mom and a dad, a younger brother, just like Mary. And um, through a course of events, my dad, with his job, moved to Western New York, and we moved several times. And in, I believe it was 1984-85, he um, got transferred to a small town in western New York where, where Mary lived at the time. And all when I was young, my, my family went to the Catholic Church. That's both sides of my family were Catholic. Then um, somewhere in the late 70s, early 80s, my parents got involved in what was called the Charismatic Catholic Movement. And they broke out of the Catholic Church, and they began to go to more um, non-denominational churches. One of them was actually called Word of Faith Fellowship. It was a very small church in the country. And so I had been exposed to different churches and more of a charismatic, like Pentecostal-type church. And we always went to church, always. Well, when we moved to this small town, Westfield, New York, that's where we grew up, um, there were several, there was a Catholic church, Baptist, Methodist, all the denominations. The only church that was similar to what we had been in before was a um, an Assembly of God church. So that was the church that my parents felt like at the time that we were supposed to be a part of. So my, my dad had a good job. My mom stayed at home and raised us actually the first six months when we moved to Westfield because we had been in a very small private Christian school prior to that. We were homeschooled for the first half of my seventh grade year, my brother's fifth grade year. And then they got involved in some business things and it was the best plan to send us to public school. And I had not been in a public school for quite a while. It was very, it was, I mean, scary for lack of a better word, because yes. you didn't know anybody. And like Mary said, it was full of the world. And we didn't know how to ask Jesus to help us and and how to reach out to people ourselves. So, so halfway through my seventh grade year, I started public school. That was where I met Mary. We had a very small class, but it was, and we were very close knit, but lots of sin because we didn't know Jesus. I went to church on Sunday, sometimes Sunday night, sometimes Wednesday night, and the rest of the time I was a Christian in name only. And so my parents, my, my dad had a good job, like I said. My brother and I got along fairly well. My parents never, never fought in front of us. But as time goes on, when you don't have a true relationship with Jesus, then you can't continue to walk acting like you do. It is either real or it's not. And so through a series of events, my parents bought into a business, and then my mom had to go away for training. And when she came back, well, actually while she was gone, she got into some sin. And I didn't know it at the time. I was 15, 16 years old. But I was just living my life, having relationships. Um, like Mary yeah. said, very involved in music, very involved in things at my school, involved in church, but n none, no one there really was crying out to God. So about that time, about 1989, 90, my parents separated. And I would say that, at, that it was probably the first 
devastating thing that had ever happened to me. Everything in my life was like your proverbial white picket fence. We had a nice house, never lacked for anything. We weren't extravagant by any means, but we had what we needed. And we never, there was never a thought that things were not always going to be just the way that they were. And then in one afternoon, things were not the way that they had been, and it was never the same. And I'll never forget that day because so much happened, but what I did not do that thankfully I know to do now when the devil throws any attack your way is cry out to Jesus. And I did not cry out to Jesus that day. I was 16. My mom said that she was going to be moving out. My dad was devastated. My brother was 14. He was very young. And all that I did was I ran away from God. I did not run to him. I ran away from him. And I it was at the end of my junior year. Things transpired. She moved out. We went on with life as children do and trying to adjust our lives to this new situation. And many times I've thought about how much how much God is there for us, how he's so faithful to us at every point. Yes. And when I go back to that time of my life, um, I went into my senior year. I was the senior class president. I was very involved in student government. I had, I knew, every, I mean, we knew everybody in our class. We knew yes. everybody in classes above and below us because it was so small and a very small town. And I can tell you everything that I did during that time, but I cannot tell you how I felt inside. Because I don't know that I did feel, because I pushed everything down. Everything was just a blur as far as feeling. And and I always think about that because of how much feeling God has in our hearts, how much love, how much peace, how much compassion, and how I feel that now that I'm walking with Jesus and back then I didn't. And that's such a landmark for me. I'm so grateful to God for that. So, so all that was going on inside of me. And so that whole time, my feeling was shut down. And as we went about life, um, like Mary said, it was time for our senior spring break, of the spring break of our senior year. And my dad was really trying to, to take hold of my brother and I because we were so hurt, very hurt, wounded on the inside. And he, um, my uncle, who's been on this radio program before, he was an associate pastor at a small town on the coast of North Carolina um, near Wilmington. And so when everything happened with my parents, my uncle and his pastor at the time really started taking hold of my dad, praying for him. Uh, They had some speakers at their church, and my dad came down for several weekends, and they prayed for him and and just really, really began to cry out to God and, and pray for him because he was so wounded. So he would try to impart some of those things to me, but I didn't want to hear it. I was wounded. It was much easier for me to turn to the world and what I, what was quote unquote security, what I knew than to be to be open and let that wound be healed. And so um, the time came for, for our trip and which we were excited about. And I remember telling Mary, well, we're going to go to this church. We'll be there for over the weekend. And, you know, we'll just kind of basically let's just get through it so we can get to Florida. And that was really my, my, my attitude, which was terrible. But I felt that way too. I just wanted to go to the beach. We were just, we were just living in the world. Yeah. And so, we, we, this is, this is one thing I've got to tell you. When you start to make steps, even though, even though we had the wrong idea about what was going on, the devil knew that we were getting ready to experience God. And he did. We, this one story that I will never forget this. We lived in Western New York. I mean, you know, you hear about Buffalo and blizzards and snow. 
So it's about February or March, and we've got all these plans for going to the beach. And we're going to go to the mall and go shopping. Two 17-year-olds. <clears throat> we did not live under authority with our parents. We did not inquire of God about what to do. So we decided we were going to take off to the mall, which was about 20 miles away, down in, in Erie, Pennsylvania. And so we took off, and it's very important in this story because of how much God saved our lives. We were driving in a minivan down this two lane high was two lanes one way and two lanes the other way highway black ice we had only been driving for a year we had our license there was no reason that we needed to be doing what we were doing exactly and we were going down the road and not fast and the 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 highway had a little dip and as we touched the brakes there was a semi behind us as we touched the brakes the black eyes spun our minivan around so that we were now facing backwards but on the side of the road. If we had stopped, that semi would have come straight yes. into us because it was close yes. even though it was going slow. So that was very – shook us up. Yes. I mean, it was quick, but it shook us up. And we sat there for a minute and regrouped and like foolish – 17-year-old girls, we decided we were going to get back on the road and go to the mall. And what happened was we sat there for, I don't know, five minutes or something like that. We got back on the road. Mm -hmm. And within our sights, as we got back into that flow of traffic, there was like a um, an overpass down the ways. Moments before... We got back on the road. There was like a 35 car pile up. I mean, the road was closed. We had to cross the median. And we did not see at the time. But God, we would have been in the middle of that. Yes. Destroyed. And we were so grateful to God because we saw the goodness of God, the protection of God in our lives. Mm -hmm. Because God knew he had a plan for us. And right. we were going to fulfill it. That's right. So... That was the first, you know, in looking back, I didn't see it at the time, like I said, but in looking back, I see how faithful God has been to us. Very faithful. Yes, so very faithful. do you want to go on about this? So, so I remember we, we get down to Leland and we meet, I met her uncle and we just, we obviously went to a church service. So one thing Allison had told me was that they pray and they pray very loud well, I didn't really know what that meant. I've prayed before, but not necessarily loud, but I was, I didn't know what to expect. So we walked through the doors and they were praying. Everybody was praying and it was loud prayer and it was strong and I loved it. There was nothing in me that didn't like it. I loved it. I wanted to know what they were praying for. I was getting excited. I was a little nervous, but I was getting excited. Like, what are they What are they doing? Well, then the church service started, and we're singing. And there were all these young people there. They were singing, and they were dancing. And some of them were preaching. They were excited about serving God. I have never seen that before. I mean, the, the churches that I was raised in, you barely, I don't think you clapped. I'm not sure what we did, but it was very quiet. And this was totally opposite, but I saw young people that wanted to serve God and they, they sang with all their might and they preached and they prayed with everything that was in them. I loved it from the time we walked in through the doors. And I think you did too this did. time. <laughs> so we, we stayed for the few days and then we went on to our extension in Florida. Yes, we did. And we were supposed to stay there for a week with my dad, my brother, Mary and I. And we we got down there, and Mary and I, and my brother too, really, yes, started to beg my dad, please, can we go back to Leland? Leland, North Carolina was where my uncle's church was. And let me stop here, because that is a miracle. I mean, for especially for me, I was so worldly. All I wanted was the world. I wanted to be there. I wanted to go to the ocean. I wanted to do the things that you do at the ocean, but... My heart had changed in a few days, just a few short days. I wanted to go back to that church. We had made friends there. I wanted to go back for a church service. I did not want to be at the ocean. That was a miracle. I mean, only God 
could have done that. God changed my heart. And so we did. We begged for him to take us back there. And we, we went. We, we did went go. There. We went back. We cut our Florida trip short. And we drove back up to Leland. I think we stayed we a few stayed, more days. We stayed a few, a more, few days. more days. And during that time, the few days that we stayed, we really we had more like meetings with the youth group. And that was the first time that that we actually somebody prayed for me. And yes. I'll never forget that because we a group of our newfound friends, my uncle, we sat down together and we just started to cry out to God for help. I needed help. And for the first time, after all those months, at least a year or more, of my heart being totally shut down after my parents had separated and I was so devastated, I was finally able to cry out to Jesus and literally weep before Him. And He started to heal those wounds that were in my heart. And if you've ever had divorce in your life, if you've ever had a separation yourself or with with parents, it is a deep wound if you don't go to God. And and I began the path of restoration in that area. And it, it was a lot of years of healing, but it was the beginning. And I I raised my head up out of where I was crying out to God and I felt so different on the inside. I've never experienced a change like that. That yes. was the beginning. And one thing led to the next where we came back home and we were new creatures. We were. <laughs> we didn't want to do the things that we had done before. We didn't want to listen to the music that we had listened to. We right. didn't want to go the places that we had gone. And so now here we are in our senior year. I'm supposed to go away to a, a college in Pennsylvania. I was going to a college in New York. In New York. Mm-hmm. And we both had these plans and all of a sudden we we're beginning to know God had a different plan for us. We didn't know what it was then, but we knew that something had changed in our hearts. Something had changed, definitely. So we we finished up um, our senior year. We found out that that the week that we graduated, we graduated on June 24th, 1991. <laughs> and beginning on the next day, there was going to be a youth seminar at this church, our church, the Word of Faith Fellowship. And my uncle, by this point, his church in um, on the coast of North Carolina was involved with, with our church now, Word of Faith. And they had come to a seminar or two by that time, and he invited us to come. And so we had our graduation service. <laughs> we packed up my dad's minivan, the two of us, and my brother, and we drove from Western New York to Spindale, North Carolina. And we went to that seminar that week. And again, that was our first time here. And to another level, we felt the love of God. We felt the yes. the, the presence of God. Presence of God and and how much He had a plan for our life that we never knew He had before. And right. so and really it was it was then when for me when we first came to the church here that I saw, once again, young people. It was a youth seminar, so it was all about youth. It was all about the young people. And I saw where people, the young people, they preached, they prayed, strong ministers of God. I'd never seen that. Once again, never seen that before. The presence of God was so strong there. And it was then, I know for me, I started crying out to God for the will of God for my life. I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know what I was even doing, but I started to say, Jesus, not my will, but your will be done. And that, that's a miracle. It's a miracle for, it was a miracle for me to cry that out, to want to know what the will of God was, to, to pray like that, because we were going to college and we were set to do certain things. And God came in and totally, he totally changed our plans. He did. And it looks like we're about out of time. We are. So, but I think that we're going to come back to the next program and we'll continue our testimony. We really, really are grateful that you listened today and we are on the radio every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8.30 to 9 on WCAB. Or you can listen to all of our past programs on wordoffaithfellowship.org and have a great day and we love you very much. Thank you.